Hello, how are you getting on? I'm flying it. I hope you're flying it too. If you're watching this on YouTube, you might be able to see I'm at a terrible angle and I'm poorly lit and I've got dog hair all over my top. So it can only be Garen Noon's podcast, the greatest place on earth. Um, so a bit of an elephant in the room. Today I'm going to talk about AI. Um, I've been playing around with a couple of these AI bits. There's a lot of talk about AI, so I said I'd throw my hat into the arena. Um, everybody wants to know my opinion on, on the modern global issues. Um, what is this? What is this? extremely articulate mind thinking about current things. Um, so I'll give you a bit of that. Um, but first of all, I'll address the, the elephant in the room, which is that I haven't made a podcast in ages. Um, I think it's been about a month. So I apologize for that. I'm just going to take a little drink of water. So a little bit of ASMR there for you. Um, so yeah, it's been about a month since I made a podcast. Why has it been about a month since I made a podcast? I've been very, very busy. Um, so kind of what's happened to me, I'll tell you what, I started a load of things with the best of intention, I really want to do the podcast, I absolutely love doing the podcast, especially the ones I did about mental health and stuff, a lot of people connected with those, and it's definitely been the most rewarding thing I've done, um, but they are extremely time consuming, because I have to kind of plan them out, and then I have to talk, and usually I get something wrong, and then I have to record the whole thing again, or I have to edit it, or whatever it might be. Anyway, you don't want to listen to me whinge about that, but I just got busy with a lot of opportunities that came up, and I just didn't have the time to put away to make a quality podcast. So, what I want to try and do is kind of change up what I'm doing a little bit, so I might either do the podcast in seasons, so I'll release maybe like 8 to 10 episodes, and then take a little break, and then I'll maybe release another, um, you know, maybe I'll take a month or two break and then I'll release another 8 to 10 episodes. You get the concept of a season. This is not the first time that you've heard this word. <laughs> I don't know why I'm acting like it is. Um, so I might either do that or I might put the podcast down to once every two weeks and then I'll do an extra podcast on Patreon. Um, so, yeah, those are currently the two ideas that I'm playing around with i'm also for just for this podcast i'm going to try not editing it i'm going to just try and do the podcast completely off the cuff i've done that a couple of times with other people's podcasts i've been on it's harder to do when you're by yourself um so we'll just see so if this isn't listenable if this is boring as fuck tell me and i'll go back to the other way but it is a little bit more labor intensive so i might have to reduce the amount that i'm doing them Anyway, if I, if everybody isn't sick of listening to me already go on about the podcast, um, I'll get into the actual crux of what I wanted to talk about, which is AI. Um, so AI, it's all the fucking rage now. Everybody's talking about it. Elon is scared. I'm a small bit scared. Some people aren't scared. Um, you're you're probably a bit scared. Um, so it's weird because it's one of these conversations like we've always watched films about like futuristic AI and you always kind of think, oh, in the future, there's going to be these crazy robots. But then the way that it's kind of started happening is a little bit more natural. You know, it, it, it wasn't like suddenly there's this robot standing on front of us and it has feelings. It's kind of like, oh, they started off with Google and algorithms and all this sort of stuff. And that was kind of AI, but it wasn't like general intelligence. So nobody really took any heed, even though it's probably already doing us a lot of harm. But it kind of started off with that. And now it's kind of morphing into this new general AI, um, which is which is quite similar to a lot of the technologies that already exist in search engines and in algorithms and stuff like that. But the idea with general AI is it's all being put together into one sort of general intelligence. So it's got this ability to do all of that stuff and to kind of weight different things. You know, it might be able to search things and then it can learn from them and then it will be better at interacting with a question you ask it next time. So for now, it's fairly innocuous. You kind of go on. I, I, I don't know if you've tried many of these. I'm acting as if I'm talking to one person. But yeah, I suppose I am. I'm talking to you. I don't know if you've tried them. Um, but I've tried a couple of them. So I tried the Snapchat AI. Absolutely no worry about that taking over the world. It's got to be the stupidest AI I've ever interacted with. <laughs> like, I don't know if anybody's used it, but my God, it's horrific. Like, you ask it a question, it hasn't a clue. It doesn't even know what kind of questions it can answer. Like, you'll type into it like something... I'm saying like a lot now. Um, there's absolutely none for you. I'll calm down on that. But you type into it a question, um, or you send it a picture, and it'll be like, I can't look at pictures. And, and, and then you send it a picture, and then it goes, oh, that's a lovely picture. It doesn't even know what it knows. It doesn't even know what it can do. 
Um, so that thing, um, also, it's re- it, it can be really offensive. Like, that thing really hit me hard. I, I asked it questions, and it was very insulting towards me. It's very insulting towards... So I've had a lot of people, because I made a video about the Snapchat AI, sending me, like, interactions they've had with it. And the interactions range from, you know, them talking to it and it saying really rude things about pictures they've sent or, you know, um, just, 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 just sort of weird stuff to it being, like, really complimentary. Um, I think the AI might be a straight man because whenever women sent me AI messages with Snapchat AI, it seemed to react far more favorably to them than than to men. Like somebody was sending me one and that and the Snapchat AI said that it loved them and thought they were beautiful and wanted to talk to them. I was like, the fucking AI wasn't saying any of that shit to me. It said that it was really unique that I had a beard and long hair. Like it was throwing shade at me, like. So um yeah, I don't know. I think that thing's got a mind of its own, but I don't think we need to worry about it outsmarting us. That's all I'm saying. But the really interesting one, the one that everybody's talking about, is ChatGPT. And the idea between, the idea behind ChatGPT is it's made by an organization. And their goal is essentially to make general intelligence, general AI, um, general artificial intelligence. And this thing is is crazy smart, and it's getting smarter. So it's on version four now, and it like you know it, it really learns from every interaction it has. It learns from the information it looks up on the internet. It learns from everything, and its answers get far more refined. And you can actually see throughout versions people asking it similar questions, and it just getting better and better at answering them. And we sort of had these technologies before, these, like, learning technologies. Like, that's how a lot of the chess bots and stuff work. Um, they learn from, like, the games that have been played in the past, and they learn what the best moves are. And they basically feed all of these chess games to these chess AIs. And, you know, they just learn and get better and better over time. But what's different about ChatGPT and why it's why it's something that people are getting concerned about is because it's not specialized in one area. It's not just about one thing. It's not about serving you YouTube videos like a YouTube algorithm is. It's not about, you know, playing the best chess game. The idea of this thing is that it's going to become the best at everything. You know, it's going to learn. It's going to learn how to do, how to program better than us, how to write essays and stories. And, you know, they even kind of want to AI you see the AI art coming out now the idea is is that it's going to be if you give it the right input so if you tell it the right thing if you say I want a beautiful picture of a landscape um, and a man is sitting at the ocean and uh, a landscape beside an ocean and he's and he's writing a poem and I want the, the there to be beautiful music in the background of this image, and I want the poem to be the most beautiful poem ever written, and I want it to be about this thing, then the AI will fucking do it. And it'll probably do it better than all of us. So the problem becomes, what the fuck is the point in all of us? If it's able to do art, if it's able to program things, if it can fucking do your leaving cert for you, what's the point in human beings? What, are we going to have jobs, or will AIs just do everything? And we're at the point now where this is what we're getting concerned about is, are we essentially going to be replaced? And, you know, it's hard to know because this kind of happens every time there's a bit of a technological revolution. So every time we have some revolution with technology, the print and press, you know, um, automation and factories, all of this sort of stuff, even when the fucking the the Tesco self-service counters came out. There's always this pushback from people of, well, well, what are humans going to do? And and inevitably what happens is the whole system gets more complex. So you invent factories, and even though people aren't individually hand-making things anymore, the factories make it so that we're making so much shit that we can just have a load of people half-building shit, and then there's actually more jobs than there was before. And more people get whatever's made in the factory. So previously, you might have been making... Some guy might have been making a car with a couple of his buddies, and maybe only the rich people can have them. And then you have Henry Ford come along. Not a great guy in a lot of ways, um, but he's the reason that we all are able to get a car at a price that we can sort of reasonably afford um, eventually. So that's what happens. Systems get more complex, and then you basically 
have more inputs into the system, so more people doing jobs that are, you know, a smaller piece of the overall product, um, but everybody still has jobs. That's what tends to happen. But we're sort of starting to run out of avenues where people are going to have those jobs. So now because we've automated so much stuff, a lot of people's jobs are very disconnected from the prog- product that they create. So most people are sitting in, a, in an office typing shit into Excel um, or they're you know building one part of a product or something like that or they're driving something somewhere. Th- those are the kind of jobs that we have. Nobody is... is Really, only only a very rare person is is taking a product from start to finish and doing all of the steps involved. So, so our jobs have become very disconnected to what we produce, and most of our jobs now are brain jobs. So it's 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 you know us looking at information and using our human mind to conclude, make a decision about whether we should put this in or put that in or do this and do that. It's getting very abstract, so I'm going to come away from that. <laughs> but basically, you get the idea. Um, and 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 that's been something that we could only only ever humans could really do that because because computer systems are too specialized. So a computer system might be really good at counting money or you know something like that. You know, it might be really good at sorting a, a particular set of files or whatever. But it didn't have that general all encompassing intelligence to go. You know, these two com- seemingly disconnected things, I understand how they relate to each other, and I can make a decision about the best way to to process them or to make them work together or whatever. And that's what we're for, basically. Um, and the AI is going to be able to do that now. So, so jobs like really abstract thinking jobs like computer programming, um, you know, a lot of clerical work that people do now, um, even like things that that people do, like customer service, an awful lot of that stuff is probably going to be able to be automated by this AI because it's intelligent enough to do it. So, what do we do now that this that this that this AI can do all that stuff better than us? We now have to make a decision of well, are we are we still going to have those kind of jobs, or maybe our jobs are going to be to lead the AI in the right direction? Maybe people are going to sit down and give the AI a prompt as to what it should do. So, you know, if I need an AI to do a job, somebody might have to be intelligent enough to be able to really specifically tell the AI the best way to do that job. So as I was saying earlier with the example of the picture and the poem, the more description I give the AI, the more information that I give it about, you know, what I want the poem to be about, what I want the picture to look like, what are the scenes reminding me of, you know, what, 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 where should I look for inspiration? The more specific I can be, the more of that sort of human creativity and human touch gets translated into the product of the AI. So the argument is that there will still be there will still be a lot of room for creativity, that human creativity will probably not be matched by AI for a very long time and that that will be our 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 place. But how many people are are intelligent enough or, or, and are creative enough to be useful in that system. You would imagine that it's a very small number. Most people aren't that creative. Um, I'm not that fucking creative, but 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 most most people aren't. You know, that's not necessarily their skill set. So so you know, people who are maybe less creative and maybe are like hyper organized or whatever. Um, are those people all going to be out of a job? Scary stuff. Scary stuff to think about. Um, a lot of manual labor is gone. They reckon AI is going to be able to drive vehicles now, so that's another avenue that's gone. And it it sort of makes you think. And then and then besides the, is AI going to take over most jobs, or is it going to take jobs from say everybody except maybe the top ten percent of most intelligent people or the top five percent? Beyond that, there's the idea of, is the AI in some way going to become conscious? Is it going to develop its own motives um, that maybe don't sit particularly well with human beings? Maybe it wants to kill us. Maybe it thinks we're bad. There's a lot of good reasons that AI may start to think we're bad because we do a lot of fucking bad shit. So they might think, ah, the AI might kind of go, maybe I'll fucking kill off the humans. Another drink of water there, sorry. I'm probably not going to edit this out. I'm just going to see how this works if I don't edit it. Um... So yeah, it's 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 really interesting to think about where all this is going. And it's only really now where we're starting to have these discussions, these like ethical discussions about 
are we taking technology too far? Is it time to slow down? Is it time to, just because we can do something better, just because we can make something better, should we? And previously, we were limited by our knowledge. We were limited by how fast computers could process things, stuff like that. And and those limitations are starting to go away. We have quantum computers now, which can which which can process things at insane rates. And and that technology is going to get cheaper and cheaper. And then we've got this intelligence layer that we can add. So we have, you know, probably in the next ten years, the ability to create technology that we probably cannot understand ourselves. It's intelligence and, and, and the nuance of how it works. And the speed at which it operates is going to be beyond our ability to understand it or slow it down. And and are we still going to be the ones in control of it? And that's the discussion that's happening now around ChatGPT. As it gets better and better, people are starting to wonder, hmm, should we slow this down? I find it interesting that the discussion is only happening now, though. Because in my opinion... We have been lagging around, we've been lagging behind this idea of, of technology being probably a bit too convenient or, or or a bit too good for its own good. That's probably a bad way of phrasing it. But we've been kind of lagging behind this for a while because, in my opinion, the time we should have been having this discussion about whether we should backtrack on technology is around social media. Because social media is really the first time we were presented with AI that has kind of gotten, it's kind of gotten out of control. It's kind of gotten um, ahead of us in a lot of ways. We, we, you know, as much as it might seem like Mark Zuckerberg or whoever runs Twitter, um, and I think it's still Elon Musk or did he appoint somebody else, as much as we might think that those are the people who are in control of those algorithms, they're really not. They're, 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 they're a step behind things. So, they say, okay, well, here's going to be the algorithm. It's going to show people stuff they click on, and it's going to, you know, people are going to click on these kind of things, and it's going to show more. What we're seeing is that the stuff that gets shown the most is divisive stuff, so politically divisive stuff, hateful stuff. Um, uh, topics become huge that are that are in the real world very small issues. So, uh, not small issues. I mean, they're important issues, but if you think about one of the biggest conversations that happens online and one of the things you see the most is the debate about transgender people, the treatment they receive, um, people disagreeing with the treatment that they receive or, or, or saying that the treatment should be earlier or later or whatever it might be. You know, if an alien who didn't interact with human life and who didn't live on planet Earth, um, if they were to interact purely with social media they would think that that was day-to-day one of our biggest concerns. And it isn't. It, it isn't a big concern day-to-day. It, it, it's, it's, it's a relatively small group of people who absolutely deserve the best treatment and the best rights and everybody deserves to live their best life. But, but this isn't an issue that 90% of people are interacting with day-to-day. But it's an extremely divisive issue. So it becomes the biggest issue on the internet. Um, I'm not saying that it shouldn't be an issue. I'm not saying it shouldn't be talked about. But... These are the things that, t- these particular, like, hot-button, really divisive issues are the things that get that get pushed up and up and up. And then, you know, our general day-to-day stuff that we mostly agree on, you know, if I make a video saying stuff that most people agree with and find mildly humorous and entertaining, that's probably what we should be watching most of the time. You know, most of the time we should be watching stuff that makes us feel okay, you know, we can have a bit of a chuckle and we can go, oh yeah, I basically agree with that because most of us basically fucking agree on 90% of stuff. But that isn't the stuff that gets pushed because because it doesn't drive interaction in the same way. So, so in that way, we're behind this AI of social media where, you know, they're putting this stuff out there and then we're interacting with it and something is happening and it's affecting people negatively. It's, I mean, almost everything that's happened in the last 10 years has been driven by social media algorithms, the uh, people get driven down whatever political path they're going to be on. They get driven towards the opinions they have, and and you know when you think about big tragic events that happen, you know idealistically motivated mass shootings or 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 political events. All of that stuff is being driven essentially by the algorithms of social media that have driven people further and further and deeper and deeper into their beliefs. 
That's the point at which AI got too far. <laughs> That's the point at which we should have gone back and gone, holy fuck, maybe, maybe we need to calm down with the computers a bit. Maybe we need to have a look at what's happening here and go, hmm, is everybody's life getting way shitter? Maybe easier, but shitter, certainly. Um, and I think it's interesting that we're having the discussion about this now instead of when we should have been, which was probably about 10 years ago. But um, I definitely think it's a good thing that the discussion has come up because I think we all need to have a big... And it's weird for me because I'm a person now that creates content. So basically, I'm counting on these algorithms to fucking shove me in your face for some reason. Um, and I don't even really know why I do. Like, why do I care? Why am I doing it? Because people react positively to it. And I'm like, well, if people react positively to it, then I should do it. Um, so then I do it and people react. And then it goes into the... And, and, and I'm taken into the algorithm then. So... It's interesting because this is not my profession, you know, making podcasts or making TikToks. It's not what I do for a living. I make a very, a very small sum of money from doing it, but it's certainly not what I do. Um, but I'm still driven to do it. And how much of that, and, and, you're, and you're driven to watch, you know, my content or someone else's content or whatever it might be. But how much of that is me? How much of that is my brain? And how much of that is algorithms? How much of that is the fact that I'm on my phone so much? How much of it is, is the content that I've consumed? How much of my thought process and what I'm driven to do and what I want to do is actually me? And how much of it is being pushed by, you know, artificial intelligences behind these algorithms? Um, the answer is probably quite a bit, but who knows? And of course, there's advertising and all that is algorithmically run as well. So so this AI stuff has been affecting our lives for a long time. It's only now that people are kind of going, whoa, is this going to fucking take over the world? It's like, well, it kind of already has. Um, so maybe we should have a look at that. And uh, yeah, I think the answer is it will definitely take over the world because it has already. And um, we should be pretty fucking careful about it. But it is interesting. It is cool. And, and, and you also have to concern yourself what are the potential positives of something like this what can it solve you know if we have a smart enough ai will it be able to to cure all cancers will it be able to figure out how to stop one of the super volcanoes from erupting what is the potential good and what is the potential bad and that's the that's the interesting thing about technology is that we have to we have to sort of roll the dice um, because technology does amazing things and we only really see the bad afterwards. And there's a concern with AI, I suppose, is that the bad might be so unstoppable or it might be so difficult to get back with, uh, from that we cannot ever allow it to happen. We cannot allow AI to go that far. And it's just, it's very interesting. Um so, yeah, I just want to plug the Patreon here really quick. I don't like doing it too early in the podcast because I think it, it sounds kind of, you know, it's a bit preachy to kind of go, oh, go on to the Patreon. And I'm going to be honest. If you're signing up to the Patreon, I have not been very good on there. I'm supposed to do an extra podcast, which I haven't done in a month um, because I've been so busy. So I haven't been living up to my Patreon concerns. So everybody on Patreon sh has the right to be very mad at me. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going to ask you to support me on Patreon. Um, so usually I read out the names of everybody. I'll do that in the next podcast because I haven't actually got the internet here in my um, in my studio space. So I can't pull up everybody's names and I'm using the phone to record myself. But usually I will read all the patrons' names and they'll be in every other podcast. But um, uh, the pa Patreon podcast will be returning. I'll be doing one next week. And I, I promise you I will actually keep up with it this time and I will make up for the ones I missed. I promise. The last few weeks have just been absolutely mental for me. Um, but go over, support me on Patreon. Listen, there's no pressure. I'm so happy that you're here and that you're listening to the podcast and that you're watching the TikToks and, and everything like that. Um, but if you want me to have more time to produce content, if you like what I'm doing, I do not make my living doing this, not even close. Um, and I, and I don't I put a lot of time into it. So if you want to support that, if you want to help me put more time into it, the best way to do it is to go over to Patreon. There will be extra podcasts over there. Now I am still working on the routine with all that. I'm trying my best, and I really appreciate everybody for being so patient with me. I love you all. Is that all I have to say about the Patreon? Um, yeah, I've talked about it long enough, haven't I? Um, but yeah, look, it's an option if you want to do it. I'm just gonna take a little drink of water. 
Uh, but it means a lot to me, and it does make a big difference. And everybody that support me over there, it is making a big difference. That money makes a difference, and it does allow me to put more time into stuff. So I really appreciate you. And, um, yeah, we'll continue on. We'll just conclude this AI crack. And, um, yeah, so so I think I the last thing I wanted to talk about was this idea of a post-work world or a, or a sort of... Um, I think they call it like a like a post abundance. I should have looked this up. I didn't. Okay, there's a there's a name for it, and and the idea is that we get to the point where there's really not a need for people to work anymore, and people have to make a choice to work. And what will they do? What 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 use will they have? Sorry, sorry, just a little burp there. Um, drank the water a bit too fast. Um, so th- th- the the. There will come a point. This will happen. We cannot stop this. This is the the direction that technology is trending in. There will come a point where there's no good reason for somebody to work in a supermarket. There's no good reason for somebody to drive a truck. There's no good reason for somebody to even write code because we simply are not capable of doing it as well, as efficiently, as cheaply as a computer. So we... We are, we're getting to that point pretty quickly. We might even be there in 20 or 30 years. So what does the world look like after that? So our whole economic model right now is is based on consumerism. So the fact that we all go to work and we all do a job and we generate usually more value in that job than, than, than what we're being paid. And right now, all of that money is being funneled towards about six companies who, who do almost everything. Um, and... Uh, the idea of the economy, how we grow the economy, or why the con- economy continues to grow, is because we've got a, con- a consumerist model, which we're, which is basically that we spend basically all the money that we get, and we put it back into the economy, and then the economy predicts for that, and then you know continues to grow, and everybody's happy, and we just keep buying stuff, and everybody's happy. That's a terrible explanation of the economy. Um, I do understand it a little bit better than it sounds like I understand it there, but I might do a, a podcast on the economy because it's very interesting. Um, you know how the economy works, and and how much of our mindset and how much of our belief system is based in the fact that advertisements, uh, the beginning of consumerism, all of that stuff has has influenced us for so long that we actually think it's normal and it's just a part of a system that we live in that wasn't always there and won't be always there, but we take it as a, as a constant. The problem is, is that the economy is at the point now where, where, where the the way it has been, the way the model that it has functioned on, which is, um, basically con- consumerism, um, and us all having a job and, and you know, spending our money and that sort of thing, um, that's that's sort of nearly over because it can't grow more in the next generation because the next generation is significantly smaller than the generation that is currently the consuming generation. And that doesn't seem to be slowing down. So it seems like our population is going to decrease and you can't really have growth when there's less people in the economy spending less money. Um, And possibly a lot of those people don't have a reason to have jobs. So we've got to kind of move towards something a bit different. And so there's, you know, different people are putting the different things on the table. Universal basic income is one of them. Um, Switching to an economy that's not, based around money um you could say that we're in the early stages of that with social media we have maybe an attention economy um and that people's value and they they can trade based on that um but we need a system of trading with each other that seems to be a constant we need to be able to trade value for value we need a way of generating that value in some way and how do we do that if there's if computers just do everything w- what is my value is it my creativity is it my is it my is it my the just the fact that I'm alive and um it's an interesting one because because it's always been obvious how you would generate a, a, a value you will find something that needs to be done and you'll go and do it and somebody who needs that thing done will pay you for it and we just accept that that will always be the case and and it probably won't be so what do we do then um it's an interesting one i think i might do a full podcast on that but this is one of the things that's definitely coming up around this ai conversation is this idea of well what do we what do we do when there's no real need for us anymore and i i like to think that maybe there'll be like a massive reversal back to the way that we were 
you know, maybe a hundred years ago where, you know, individual craftspeople got really good at one thing and they made it. Maybe there'll be sort of, uh, I mean, we all buy like lots of, you know, just factory made stuff now. Maybe in 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 sort of a post us needing to be in the factories and write the code and all that world. Um, maybe there would be more value derived from having handmade items, paying for handmade items. Maybe we'll go back to that time when, you know, there's a guy in the town who's really good at making fucking wheels and everybody wants his wheels because they're the best wheels um, instead of just buying them on Amazon. Maybe things will go back to that and maybe we'll revert to a, a... Maybe we will accept that just because we don't have to do something doesn't mean it's not worth doing. So we might go back to to just a way of life before. And I like the idea that we might, that the the advancements in technology, having technology do most almost everything, will actually have us pull back from technology and live a more human lifestyle, live a more, you know, a connected lifestyle to the earth and to, to I sound like a hippie now and I'm really not. I, I literally spend all my life on computers. I've never even seen a tree. Um, but, you know, it, it, we're we're more connected to the product that we're making. Maybe we'll go back more to agriculture. Maybe we'll go back more to trade, uh, individual trade stuff like that. Um, I like to think that that will happen, and and that technology will just take care of all the things that technology takes care of, and and we'll kind of separate ourselves from all those systems, and we'll have our own little world, and 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 then there'll be the improvements that these technologies can make around us. That's very utopian. It's probably not going to be that good. But it's an interesting thing to think about. I haven't given it enough thought to really go on about it, as you can probably tell, because I'm just kind of talking shite now. Uh, But it's an interesting thing to think about, and definitely something I might go into on another podcast. But anyway, I think I kind of waffled on about AI and crack for long enough there. You're probably sick of listening to me. I'd say you want to do something else now. Um, So I let you. I let you go. Um, Some of you will have already gone. um, And good luck. Good luck to you. Hopefully you still went to the Patreon, though. Um, but no, good luck with the rest of your day. Hopefully you're having a good day now. And don't, and don't lie to yourself. If you're not having a good day, you know, that's all right. We don't, we don't always have a good day. But, but fucking do something small for yourself to improve it and just make it a tiny bit better for yourself. It's not always possible to make it good because some days are just shite and there's nothing you can do about it. I hope you're not having a day like that. But if you are, tomorrow won't be like that, I'm sure. Um... I'm having an okay day, so so it's not too bad, it's not too great, it's not going to stand out, do you know? I'm not going to be like, in six years, I'm not going to be like, do you remember that Friday I made that podcast about AI? That was a great day. It's not up there, but it's not horrible either. So, I leave you to it now, and um, have a great day. Hopefully I didn't make you think about, ro- like, dangerous robots too much. That's not what I was trying to do. I was kind of trying to take a hopeful stance on it, actually. I don't know if that came through. That w- That was what I was going for. Um, but yeah, I'll fuck off now, so anyway, good luck!